please take a moment to subscribe to my YouTube channel. We we're pounding the airfield, trying to soften it up. Um, I remember our aircraft were flying over, you know, blowing some stuff up and we we're kind of paused outside. Do you remember waiting. all the tracers just everywhere? Like oh, Star yeah. Wars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that was, that was beautiful. It was you know? wild. Yeah. I mean, I don't even like the 4th of July anymore just because it's boring. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but yeah, so we're just waiting for everything just to get softened up. And I remember there was a, I don't know what kind of plane it was, but it flew over. There was like a power grid or like a, a repeater station or something out there. And I remember it, it flew over and then dropped something. It looked like a party popper. It's just like, you know, and, and stuff just started like going everywhere. It looked like a bunch of like ribbons and stuff. And then all of a sudden, like all this, all these lightning bolts were just shooting out of this power grid and, you know, hitting all these little strands that were fluttering down. And, and I don't know what was running off that grid, but it definitely went dark after that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but so the, the light starts, you know, kind of coming in, the, the sun starts coming up. And then finally we went and busted it through the, the chain link fence that was surrounding the, the airport. So as we're pushing forward, I believe it was, I can't remember what company it was, but they were off to our right. And the plan was for us to push forward. I think they were with Lima 3-4, if I remember correctly. They broke off to the right and kind of swung around toward the uh, buildings that were surrounding the airport. Meanwhile, we were pushing forward up to the runway it was either first or third platoon i think it was first yeah I'm, I'm trying to dig i can't remember if it was india or, or lima maybe it was india but whoever whoever um was supporting them uh so they ended up punching out to the right toward the buildings we ended up pushing forward up to the runway and then we set into a uh kind of a defensive posture you know we're all online so that we can maximize firepower to the front. And, you know, there's BMPs out there in, in the middle of the airport, you know, a lot of dismounted infantry in the airport. And so we're out there, you know, engaging the targets that we can. And, you know, it's just the, the whole airport is just getting covered in smoke, you know, all this firepower just going out, you know, trying to take out these guys that are in the airport. It was just like, wow, it was almost, you know, something out of, you know, an apocalyptic movie. I remember, so there was this BMP out there, right? And one of the infantry dismounted with the javelin. And I believe they said that was the first time that anybody's fired a javelin in combat. So this, this infantry jumps out with his javelin and I'm sitting there watching him and he fires it. And I'm used to AT4s and SMAs, you know, things that are kind of like a direct line of sight weapon. So when he fires this javelin, I watch it kind of, you know, fly out the front and then it just takes off into the air. And I'm like, what the hell was that? You know, this guy's the worst shot in the Marine Corps history, man. He's trying to shoot down a crow or something. <laughs> and I watched this rocket just like climbing and climbing and climbing. And then right as it passes over this BMP and I think it's going to, you know, just keep on going. It just noses down and boom, hits the top of the BMP. I actually did a video about that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because that BMP was traversing toward my vehicle. I thought I was going to die. I was like, oh, God. I'm okay. F***ed. And I had two Javelin teams with me at the time. So maybe that was your vehicle that, that he came off of and fired that Javelin. It, more than likely, because I know that that's exactly what happened to me at the airport. And I was like, dude, we're done. Like, that thing shot up in the air, and I'm like, he missed. Yeah. <laughs> So that dude's shooting at something, man, but it wasn't that BMP. Well, yeah, it turned out it was that BMP. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember when they hit the top of that BMP, I was like, all right, cool. I'm waiting for this nuclear explosion to just like, wah, and just make this thing disappear, you know, and leave this huge crater in the ground. Almost like Satan's hand just reaches up and just pulls this thing down. But I remember when they hit the top of that BMP, it was just like, it was like a lot of smoke and stuff. And then that BMP was done. It was almost disappointing, dude. I was waiting for, you know, something really cool to happen. <laughs> but yeah, I just remember everything <laughs> like the BMP and everything around it turning white. Yeah, it was just everything was just like white around it. But 
<laughs> so, so we uh, ended up um, kind of clearing out the airport as best we could on our end. Um, I know that they were still taking uh, small arms fire from the buildings off to our right, off to our right or, or kind of, you know, diagonal from us. So they were still clearing those buildings. Meanwhile, there was a jet that was sitting on the tarmac. Uh, we disabled that jet or somebody disabled that jet. People just, oh, there's a jet there, man. Let's just blow it up. So people are pumping 50 cal rounds into it. People dropping 40 mic mic onto it. You know, this thing kisses on fire on the right side and stuff. And it's just like people still shooting at it because when do you get to shoot at a jet? You know, so I don't <laughs> that even remember over. that. Yeah. Yeah, there was a it was a white jet and it wasn't a huge one. It looked like maybe, you know, it was smaller. I don't know what it was, but yeah, that thing caught on fire. And it, it was just like I said, man, people are just still shooting at this because how often do you get to shoot at a jet? All of a sudden there's this explosion uh pretty close in front of my vehicle. That kind of caught me off guard. I was like, what the hell was that? You know? And so I'm I was kind of hanging out of the driver's station a little bit or not hanging out, but kind of like popped up a little bit. So I sat back down I'm checking myself. I'm like, okay, I'm not hit. I started talking to my crew chief and made sure he was okay. And he was. So he got onto the radio and started talking to my section leader and telling him, you know, we had an explosion in front of us. We don't know what it was, uh, whatever. And not too long after that, there was another explosion behind my vehicle. I believe it was behind my vehicle and my assistant section leader's vehicle, almost kind of like between us, but but back. And at that point, I was like, dude, we're, we're getting bracketed right now. Uh, there's got to be a spotter or something somewhere, but we can't we can't be sitting here. So we ra radioed that back to my assistant. Uh, we radioed that back to my section leader and told him we got to get out of this position. So he's like, I agree. Let's back off. So we ended up pushing back a little bit. And there was a hill that had like oil lines or something that kind of ran through it. I was lucky because I got behind that berm and it was like perfect death laid, you know, blocked the front of the vehicle, but the turret was still able to engage targets. And now my section leader, my assistant section leader are sitting off to my left and right. And that berm was big enough for one Amtrak. So I'm like, yeah, now I got the cover. And <laughs> you guys, you know, sorry, but you're kind of sitting out there, you know, thrown to the wind. And about the time we got back there, uh, another explosion actually landed where the vehicles were. So, uh, you know, it was almost kind of one of those things where it was, almost unnoticed at that point because you know now we're back you know another explosion it's like all right who cares it's far enough away it didn't really affect us i remember people started radioing in like hey we got to find out where this spotter is and so we're all looking around uh we're scanning the, the control tower there's nobody in there we thought we spotted somebody on top of the tower and it turned out that at where we were uh, the point of view to that tower actually made a couple of the antennas form this almost a human silhouette. So everybody starts shooting at that silhouette, you know, and it's not moving. Turns out it was just a couple of antennas that look like, you know, that happened to form the silhouette of a person. And so next thing I know, the Cobra, the Cobra, the gunships start coming in. And I sit there and I'm watching them kind of circle around and they pass to my right and then behind me and then they all of a sudden as they're crossing behind me they just bank hard to the right so now they're on my left but they're banking you know hard back in front of me and you just see them nose down and just rockets you know just dumping rockets and they it was at the base of the bridge so i don't remember if or i don't know if you remember the bridge that we were uh told to guard once we got through the compound and then I think it was just like north, northeast ish of where the, the airport was. But those C Cobra gunships came in and just started pouring rockets into the base of this, this bridge. And it turns out later that there was a uh, Iraqi mortar position there. So that, that was the people that were dropping the rounds on us. And oh, so they took them out. Yeah. So they took them out. 
And after that, man, we didn't, we didn't re receive any more mortar fire, you know, at the airport. So we ended up clearing the airport. We all pushed forward. Uh, our section, first section, um, ended up setting up on the north end of the airport overlooking or in a position to, to do an overwatch on that bridge. And then we were told anybody that comes across that bridge, you light them up. All right, roger that. So we're sitting over there, and that's the first time I actually got to dismount off the vehicle after the days of pushing up to Basra. And the, the first thing I noticed is that there's a T-55 sitting somewhere off to the right on the right side of our, our vehicles. Uh, we knew it was already taken out. Um, I don't know how long it had been there. I don't know if it was just, you know, old armor that they had dropped over there, but it looked pretty old at that point. But we were all in these pre-made fighting, you know, positions that had been dug out for these tanks um, before we had even got there, you know. So it was for the Iraqis to defend the airfield and whatnot. So... <laughs> So I climbed down off the vehicle. I'm over there stretching. You know, I pull off my my moth boots uh, because I've been sweating in those things for three days. I never took them off and they don't breathe. So all that sweat and all that, you know, just your socks being wet. I mean, you get athlete's foot from hell, man. It's like, you know. I was in my it. underwear the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> You know, hindsight being 2020, that was a smarter thing to do <laughs> because when I pulled those boots off and I pulled because they go over your your um, jungle boots. So when I pulled the mop boots off and then pulled my jungle boots off and then pulled off my socks, my feet were literally like yellowish orange and chunks of skin just like came off with the sock. And it was the worst smell, you know, just like smelly rotting flesh on your feet kind of athlete's foot you know it it was terrible so i took them off and i hung out there for a little bit you know just kind of letting my feet air out i remember when the infantry walked by and they're like damn that looks gross your feet almost look as bad as mine <laughs> and he just keeps on walking you know keep on walking by so i was like all right at least i'm not the only guy out here you know with this condition right now <laughs> but anyway just falling apart yeah, just totally falling apart, man. <laughs> it's again like jungle rod or trench foot or something. I don't know, but I was like, I want to go check out that T-55. I've never seen one before. So I got down, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. So I had taken a nap. I got about an hour of sleep. And then I woke up and I was like, hey, I want to go check out that T-55. I hadn't seen one before. So started going over there, climbed on top of the T-55 and stuff and, you know, looked down into it and it was like, okay, well, this is unimpressive. Well, I was hearing like this rumbling in the distance, right? Um, and I look up and there's this tank convoy, I believe it was the British, British tanks rolling from the, to the, from the north past the uh, bridge coming our direction toward the airport. And to my horror, I see every one of those tank barrels swing over toward me. And I'm over here on top of this T-55. And I'm like, you know, this is this is probably a bad position to be in because <laughs> I don't know if these dudes know that we had already taken the airport. But here I am standing on top of this T-55. And I'm like, OK, this is going to go like, you know, a couple of different ways. One, they're going to fire, but I'm going to see them fire but I'm going to jump off like a superhero as this tank explodes out from underneath me or two, they're going to fire and I'm just going to totally get decimated on top of this tank or three. I need to do something quick to let them know that I'm not an Iraqi. So no, shit, the first thing I could, the first thing I could think to do was looking at their barrels, staring at me. I go, that's awesome. And, and right after that, dude, all their barrels kind of like swung back to the front. I was like, all right, man, at least I'm not going to die today. <laughs>